Okay, uh, all they had uh, back in these days uh, for illumination were candles, uh, a bit similar to this, made out of animal fat, I think they called it tallow. Um, so they would either uh, stick this on their helmet somewhere or maybe put it on a ledge uh, so they could see to do the work and that involved drilling a hole uh, or holes into the rock face. So one man would stand there with a chisel uh, and just uh, turn it slowly around and then his mate with a hammer would beat it in to the, uh, into the rock face and make a hole uh, similar in size to that one. After they'd actually drilled the hole uh, they would then pack it with uh, gunpowder, black powder, whatever they had at the time to cause an explosion and then using the quill of a swan's feather, sorry, a goose feather, make up a fuse similar to this. You telescope one quill into the other, fill it with black powder, put it into the hole, seal the top over, light the end, run like hell, I would think, and get out of the way, and then the stuff will be blasted out onto the floor. If you look at this photograph, which wasn't taken uh, in this mine, and is a bit more modern day, you can see the same principle. Uh, we've moved on a bit in time, because we're now using, in this photograph, carbide lamp, uh, lamps instead of using candles. Uh, the fact that they were able to uh, expose a naked flame meant there was no problems with explosive gases. You didn't have a problem with methane. You didn't have to go to work and take a canary with you. <laughs> okay, so you can see the same principle. One bloke here with a chisel, he's very trusting, isn't he? And his mate with a hammer, beating it into the rock face, you can see there, and that's what we call the load. The load itself contains the tin, only about 2% tin. So you don't, want to, you don't want to dig out any more than necessary. You don't want to send stuff to the surface that hasn't got any tin in it. And you can just see the difference in colour from there to the load and this side. And the load usually in tin mines runs vertically, usually slightly off vertical. So the principle is drill this pepper pot, this with a load of holes, uh, light all the fuses, get out of the way, then the stuff be blasted out onto the floor. And the biggest danger they would have had in those days <clears throat> would have been if they uh, drilled into or blasted into some old workings that might have contained lots of water. You don't really all of a sudden want a lot of water coming into your mine. And being so close to the cliff as we are, uh, then you've got, got to be careful what you're doing. Okay, um, the area we're standing in now, as you can see, has been pit propped and boarded over. But as we go into the older workings, you can see what it was like to have been a miner back in those days. Is that recording video or audio? Uh, just the videos, okay. Okay. I can switch it off if you want. Do I get any copyright if you sell it? <laughs> I won't sell it, but you can have it if you want afterwards. Can you send me a uh, Yeah, yeah, I can send it to you. I'll turn them on again. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Is that me? Yeah, it's, on. it's actually videoing on 360 as well, so oh, if you okay. give me your email address afterwards, I'll send you. Oh, brilliant. It can okay. take me a couple of days to upload, so I haven't forgotten if you don't get it straight away. <laughs> okay. No problem. Okay, we're going to go into the old workings, okay? Yeah. You have to watch your head in a few places. That's the way you go. Oh wow.
everybody comfortable? <laughs> Friendly old Martin, isn't it? <laughs> okay, um, if you uh, look at the stuff that's in this double-handed barrow, that will give you some sort of idea what sort of sizes the rock would have been in after they've blasted it out. Um, in this double-handed barrow, um, children apparently as young as 10, 12 years old were used in some circumstances to ferry this stuff from the workings back to the shaft. <clears throat> Once it got back to the shaft, they'd tip it into a container similar to the one you can see there, and then raise up to the surface, maybe by some form of uh, horse-drawn system that we call a whim. Um, if you can see where I'm shining the light just there, you can just see uh, a white stripe of quartz uh, running down slightly off vertical. That would be an area where the tin is. So they would normally then drill into that, blast it out, and then that would uh, be then taken back to the uh, shaft and s sent up to the surface. Um, the shaft, shaft we're looking at here at the moment goes down about 300 feet. Uh, any water that gets into these old workings uh, is then pumped back to this shaft, drops down to the bottom, and then the very bottom of the shaft we have a thing called an adit, which is a very small uh, level uh, to take the water from the bottom of the shaft, and then it gravitates out into the sea. Okay, Any, anybody got any questions? I must be doing something right. <laughs> okay. Can you be able to go? It's fine. It's okay. I'll get the back in front of you. <laughs> it's okay. Stuff down below, yeah. Walk on this plate. You can see the water rolling underneath. It's quite low here. It might be head. That's good. <laughs> okay, right. Um, since we turn that corner. Um, you've got to imagine an area that wide 